Hello everyone and welcome to Deep Dives, a new feature on this channel where I take a deeper look at problematic mechanics in certain video games. These videos are not just going to be opinion pieces, we'll be using math and geometry to make our case. So let's get started. In today's video, we're going to take a deeper look at Stellaris and talk about how hyper lane relays negatively impact warfare and to a large extent the game itself. This topic comes to us courtesy of YouTube commenter Thaw, who asked, what is it about hyper relays that people like me dislike so much? It's a great question. And in the next several minutes, I'll attempt to answer that. Hyper relays were introduced with the Overlord DLC. They allow ships to rapidly traverse any star systems connected to their network. It's easy to understand why the development team at Paradox invented them. In the early game, before advanced travel technologies like wormholes and gateways become available, it can be difficult to defend an empire, especially a large one. Players simply don't have enough fleet power to station a fleet at every vulnerable point along their borders. Thus, they are reliant upon their fleets being mobile and reactive. The Navy needs to be able to neutralize a threat in one system and then quickly sprint to the other side of the empire and neutralize a different threat. Thus, hyper relays were born giving fleets a chance to move quickly from one end of an empire to another along a connected network. Unfortunately, as good as this mechanic might sound for the player, it also effectively destroys a lot of the other features and mechanics that make conflict and war fun and balanced in Stellaris. In any theater of war, whether it's on the ground or in space, the geography of the battlefield matters. Impassable terrain, for instance, can neutralize tanks. Choke points can create opportunities for a smaller force to hold off or even defeat a larger one. And in a space game like Stellaris, the geography of the systems and their connected hyperlanes can significantly influence the tactics and strategies that factions employ during a conflict. In short, the geography of the galaxy, the size and layout of each empire, matters. But what happens when it doesn't? Let's go back to something I said earlier. Larger empires can be difficult to defend. In a way, they represent a classic double-edged sword. They offer more planets and resources to the player. Sure, this is a good thing. But they can be more difficult to defend since their borders are larger, creating more points of vulnerability along them. This is a trade-off a lot of players are willing to make. They don't mind dealing with additional vulnerability if it means access to more systems, planets, and resources. To them, the risk is worth the reward. And that's a key element with any game mechanic. Risk versus reward. It is incredibly important to balance game play. If the risk versus reward of any particular game mechanic tips too far in either direction, the game will suffer. And that is precisely what happens with the inclusion of hyper relays. They reduce the risk of owning and defending a large empire because they make the size of the empire irrelevant. Now, if that was the worst thing that hyper relays did, it would be bad on its own. But it actually does something far worse to the game than trivialize owning a large empire. Imagine an empire like this in Stellaris. It is bigger than our own and very aggressive. Imagine also that we do not have complete intel on them. We don't know their fleet strength or tech level. Suppose they are stronger than us. Or suppose our tech levels are similar, but they simply have more ships than we do. What happens if they attack? How could we successfully defend ourselves? How could we successfully counterattack? Would it be possible for us to hurt them enough to force them to negotiate a peace treaty? Or even better, could we turn the tables and make them surrender to us? Prior to the existence of hyperlane relays, it was possible to win some of these sorts of conflicts, in part by taking advantage of the geography of the battlefield. The reason for this is because distance equals time. It takes time for reinforcements to arrive to a specific location, which means weaker empire can potentially defeat a stronger empire if it can pick and choose when and where to fight and whittle the enemy forces down before reinforcements arrive. Another reason this can work is because it is rare to find enemies gathering all of their fleets into one massive doom stack. Remember, every empire has multiple points of vulnerability along its borders. 
and because they may be engaged in many wars at one time, their fleets may often be spread out. Given that distance equals time, it becomes possible to attack an individual enemy fleet with a superior force and win that battle before the enemy can arrive with reinforcements. If a smaller empire can chain enough of these wings together, it's possible to force a peace and sometimes even win. But again, these sorts of scenarios are only possible if it takes time to travel from one system to another. Once hyper relays entered the equation, however, such strategic possibilities disappear. Hyper relays are intended to make traversal across a network of systems nearly instantaneous. But if you look at it from a different perspective, what they really do, mathematically speaking, is shrink the galaxy. Let's go back to our fictitious empire. You can think about this empire size in terms of the longest path from one entry point along its border to another. In this case, the longest possible path is 20, because we'd have to cross 20 systems and hyperlanes to make the trek. So, let's calculate the time to cross it. Each of these systems can take a certain number of days to physically cross from one hyperlane to another. The exact number of days depends on just how far across the system the ship must travel. Let's say the average trip is 10 days, just for simplicity. Additionally, in order to jump through a hyperlane, a ship's drive takes a certain number of days to charge. Typically, this is about 15 days, though various technologies can improve the charge time. Once a ship is fully charged and enters the lane, the actual jump time is instantaneous from one system to the next. So, we can see that the travel across the system and the charge time of the engines is what actually costs us the time to travel. Even if we use very simplistic math, we can figure out that it's going to take somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 days to travel from point A to point B. If we engage in a battle near point A and the enemy has ships at point B, we have a good chance of winning and being ready for them by the time their second fleet reaches us. But the minute you build a hyper relay network across the core systems, you effectively reduce this empire size from 20 to zero. Suddenly, that jump of 20 systems that took about 500 days now happens nearly instantaneously. Are we seeing the problem yet? Imagine if, for instance, during World War II, Germany could have sent all its forces, every last soldier, tank, and gun to the Western Front for D-Day. And then, as soon as D-Day was over, they could have instantly moved every single surviving force to the Eastern Front in the blink of an eye. Imagine how such a war would change if one of the combatants could move all of their forces instantly anywhere in the theater of war. Changes the equation, doesn't it? The existence of hyper relays effectively removes geography from the battlefield in Stellaris. Instead, with enough of them built across the various empires, they don't just reduce the size of a single empire, they effectively reduce the overall size of the galaxy by a significant margin. Suddenly that 800 nose galaxy is now cut in half, if not smaller. Any tactics that we could have employed to reasonably achieve victory with an inferior force are now thrown out the window. The only viable remaining one is to put all of our fleets, every last one of them, into a single massive doom stack and hope that it can withstand the full might of all the enemy ships in their own doom stack. Because the minute a naval force sets foot inside a system connected to a hyper relay, every enemy ship that is also connected to that network, regardless of its location, can instantly travel to the side of the battle. At that point, throw tactics out the window. Forget strategy. Forget trying to take advantage of the geography and geometry of the galaxy in order to win with an inferior force. Forget that time is an ally because it doesn't exist. Only thing that matters in this scenario is the size of each empire's total power. That is, the size of the doom stack they can field. We know from games like Civilization IV that doom stacks are not only boring, but they also reduce all warfare to a very simple equation. Who has the highest overall power? That's all that matters. The one that has the most power will win. Simple as that. So when people ask me why I dislike hyper relays, it's not because I think the mechanic is bad on its own. It's actually a good idea. That's probably how it got made in the first place. Hyper relays do exactly what they advertise. They make traversal across a network of systems very fast. 
almost instantaneous, but ultimately their presence affects too many other war mechanics in a negative way to warrant their inclusion in the game. They shrink the galaxy, they trivialize the risk reward of growing a large empire, and they suck the strategy and tactics out of naval confrontation. They reduce all war strategy to the most simplistic equation, field a huge doom stack and win. And that's just not fun or interesting. So there you have it, my reasoning for why I dislike hyperlane relays. In theory, they sound like a nice addition to the game, but as soon as you start playing with them, you find out they're not. I hope you all enjoyed this deeper dive into the mechanics of hyperlane relays in Stellaris. I'll be putting together more videos like this in the coming weeks and months to discuss problematic design elements in video games. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing. As always, my Patreon is listed in the description below, and you can consider throwing a few coins to your Witcher. Until next time, happy gaming everyone.